Before doing any detailed configuration, Apple's implementation team will first decide which standard processes they want to use. This is known as the fit to standard approach. In a fit to standard workshop, Apple's experts would look at SAP's out of the box processes. For example, the standard sales process from order to delivery to billing and determine how these match Apple's business. The goal is to fit Apple's business into the proven processes SAP provides rather than heavily customizing the software. This is beneficial because it leverages SAP's best practices and makes the system easier to maintain over time. So the first step is scoping. Using SAP central business configuration, the team selects what functionality and which country split regions Apple needs. For example, Apple sells products globally, but in this project, maybe they are rolling out S4 HANA cloud for the US operations first. In CBC, they would select the scope for sales, order to cash, procurement, procure to pay, manufacturing, finance, and so on, and choose USA as the country localization for which country-specific settings will apply. By choosing these business scenarios and localizations, SAP will automatically activate the relevant best practice content in Apple's S4 HANA cloud system. This means the system will have baseline processes for, say, selling products in the U.S., including things like U.S.-specific tax settings, procuring from suppliers, and so on. Apple can also include any industry-specific scenarios. Since Apple is a product-centric company designing and selling devices, they will include discrete manufacturing processes in the scope. If Apple also wanted to manage after-sales service like Apple Care repairs, they would scope the service processes too. Once the scope is defined, the CBC guides the team to assign a deployment target, which system the settings will go into, and then moves into the configuration phases. Now, Apple's project in CBC knows we are implementing sales, procurement, manufacturing, finance for US. With scope set, the next step is to enter some core configuration values in the system. These are the essential settings that tailor the broad processes to Apple's organization. A key part of this is setting up the organizational structure. In SAP terms, this means defining things like what are Apple's company codes, legal entities for financial reporting, what sales organization and distribution channels will they use for selling, what plants represent their factories or warehouses, and so on. SAP's best practice content comes with some default org structures which we can copy or adapt. For instance, there might be a template company code for US. Apple would go into the CBC or the Manage Your Solution app and enter their specific values. For example, create company code AP01 for Apple USA. Define a plan for Apple California warehouse where iPhones are stocked, a sales org for Apple online store US, and perhaps another for Apple retail stores US. These entries ensure the system knows Apple's business units. In CBC, the configuration activities are presented in a list with categories. Apple's team might see activities like set company code details, maintain plant, define shipping points, configure sales territories, and so on, each corresponding to a piece of the puzzle. The CBC marks some activities as mandatory. Those must be filled in because the system needs them to run. For example, defining at least one company code and fiscal year variant is mandatory. Other activities are recommended. There are default values, but Apple will likely change them. For example, default chart of accounts or pricing conditions. And some are optional. The system has defaults that work for most companies, and Apple might leave them as is, for example. Reasons for blocking a delivery 
might not need changing. Let's illustrate this with a concrete example. Configuring sales for Apple's iPhone business. In the sales area, Apple would need to ensure the system knows how to process an iPhone order. This might involve defining Apple's products, material master data for iPhone models. Though master data is usually loaded separately, configuration includes setting up product categories or item types, setting up a pricing procedure, how the system calculates prices and any discounts or taxes, and specifying things like shipping points, locations from which goods are shipped. Suppose Apple has a central distribution center for online orders. We create a shipping point called Sunnyvale Distribution Center. We also ensure there's a sales order type configured. SAP provides a standard order type like OR for standard orders. If Apple wants to use it as is, great. If Apple needs a special order type, say for Apple's employee store or a specific program, they could copy the standard and adjust a few parameters. All of these configurations are done through Fiori apps or CBC web screens that are user friendly. For example, to create or edit a company code, Apple's team might use a Fiori app that asks for company details, name, address, currency, and so on. To adjust a pricing condition, like setting the tax rate for California sales, they might use a configuration activity that opens an input screen for tax codes. If this were the old on-premise SAP ERP, one would use the IMG implementation guide, transaction to input these settings. In S4HANA cloud, the interface is more guided, but under the hood, it's performing similar steps. CBC even shows an IMG activity ID in the URL when you open a config screen, hinting it aligns with an underlying SAP configuration point. As Apple's team enters each configuration, they mark it complete in CBC, which signals to everyone that say, we have finalized the sales org setup. The system may ask to assign changes to a transport request, which is a package to move these settings from the development environment to test and production. In S4HANA cloud, transports are mostly handled automatically. When Apple saves their config in CBC, it gets recorded and will be moved to the quality and production systems as needed. The important point is Apple's specific choices, their org units, their product related settings and so on are now stored in the system. To make this more tangible, let's walk through a simplified demonstration scenario. Apple setting up the order to cash process for selling iPhones. We'll assume the basic best practice process is already activated by SAP, which includes steps like create sales order, create delivery, post goods issue, create invoice, receive payment. Apple's job is to ensure all the supporting configuration is in place so that this process works for their business. Here are the key configuration steps Apple would take. First is organizational elements for sales. Apple defines the sales org structure. For example, sales organization US01, Apple USA Sales, with distribution channel R8 Retail for Apple stores and distribution channel ONL Online for the Apple Online Store and division ELD for electronics devices. These help classify sales orders. In CBC, Apple fills in these values under a task like setup sales organizations and channels. Next is products and inventory setup. Ensure that plants and storage locations are configured. Apple might have plant US 10 as the central warehouse for phones. A config activity define plant US 10 and assign to company code AP01 is completed. Also, define a shipping point and link it to the plant. For example, shipping point US 10 for the warehouse. This is needed so the system knows 
from where deliveries will ship. Next is financial settings. Link the sales org to Apple's financial structure. For instance, assign the sales organization to a company code and set the account determination so that when Apple sells an iPhone, the revenue is recorded in the correct accounts. SAP best practices come with a standard chart of accounts, a list of all accounts. Apple can use it or modify it. Let's say Apple uses a custom chart of accounts due to specific reporting needs. They would upload or configure those accounts and assign it to their company code in a finance configuration step. This is followed with master data preparations. Though master data is not exactly configuration, it's worth noting in context. Apple would load its products material master data for each iPhone model. Customers like individual Apple Store customer records or online customer master data and pricing conditions, prices for each iPhone model. Configuration ensures the structure is ready. For example, setting the pricing procedure that ties customer sales area and product to a price list. Next is process flows and rules. Configure any specific rules in the process. For example, if Apple wants that a certain order type requires approval for discounts beyond 10%, that could be a business rule configuration. In S4 HANA Cloud, this might be done via output management or DRF plus or workflow settings depending on scenario. For our purposes, assume Apple is fine with standard no special approval needed for a normal sale. And then testing the configured process, Apple's team would then test an end-to-end -end scenario in the system. Create a sales order for 100 iPhones by an Apple store using the sales org US01 channel RET, confirm it, create a delivery, post goods issue, then invoice. If all the configuration was done correctly, each step will go through. If something is missing, the test will fail. For example, if Apple forgot to set up a tax code for a certain state, the billing might give an error. The team can then quickly go back to CBC and enter any missing config values. During configuration, Apple might realize some changes they want. For instance, SAP's default process might assume immediate delivery upon order. Apple might choose to enable a delivery block on certain large orders until payment is confirmed. The configuration activity for delivery blocks is optional. Defaults exist. Apple could add a new reason like awaiting payment as a delivery block reason. This is a simple example of tailoring the process via config values. Another example, Apple's fiscal year isn't the calendar year. In reality, Apple's fiscal year might start in October. In the finance configuration, there is a setting for fiscal year variant. SAP provides variants like K4 is calendar year. If Apple needs a different one, say one that starts in October, they would configure a new fiscal year variant or adjust an existing one to match their financial calendar and assign it to their company code. That way, all financial postings for Apple will be aligned to Apple's reporting periods. Through these steps, we see that configuring business processes is about telling SAP how Apple does business using predefined forms and switches. Apple doesn't need to program how a sales order works. SAP already knows how to handle an order deliver, invoice, and so on. Apple just needs to input their organizational data, choose which options to turn on or off, and maybe adjust thresholds or defaults. SAP Central Business Configuration keeps this organized by listing all required configuration activities based on the scope Apple chose, ensuring nothing critical is missed. For instance, since Apple chose the sales US scope, 
CBC will list activities relevant to US sales, including tax US specific settings. If Apple later rolled out in Canada, CBC would present additional activities for Canadian taxes, bilingual forms and so on. In this lesson, you learned how SAP S4 HANA Cloud's best practice content can be configured to meet Apple's specific business requirements. We explored how Apple would start with a fit to standard approach, matching their needs to SAP's pre-delivered processes. Using SAP Central Business Configuration, Apple's team would scope the solution, selecting the business areas and countries to activate, and then enter the necessary configuration values for each area. We discussed examples like defining Apple's company code, sales org, plants, and setting up key process parameters for selling iPhones. Throughout the process, SAP's guided tools help ensure that Apple only has to fill in the details that matter. Everything else is already intelligently defaulted by SAP's model company settings. By configuring rather than customizing in the sense of writing code, Apple benefits from a system that is both tailored and upgrade safe. They can use standard processes like order to cash or procure to pay that SAP has refined over years and just tweak things like organizational units and rules to align with Apple's operations. In our demonstration, we saw how Apple would configure the order to cash scenario from setting up org structures to testing a full sales process for iPhones. The result is that Apple's SAP S4 HANA cloud system knows about Apple's world, its stores, products, warehouses, and policies, and can execute transactions accordingly. Configuring business processes in S4 HANA cloud is largely a matter of data entry and option selection in a guided environment, not programming. For Apple, this means faster implementation, leveraging a cloud ERP that is ready to work with industry best practices for a company like theirs. Apple ensures critical settings like financial periods, tax setup, and organizational elements are correctly input so the standard processes run smoothly. Any team member with the proper role can perform these configurations through the SAP Fiori interface, making the process transparent and collaborative. Now take a moment to reflect on these questions to solidify your understanding. Why is adopting a fit to standard approach using SAP's pre-delivered process designs advantages for a company like Apple as opposed to designing every process from scratch? In our Apple scenario, we saw many things were pre-configured by SAP. Can you name a few specific settings Apple must configure themselves before they can start processing sales orders? Why are those settings unique to Apple? How does SAP Central Business Configuration simplify the process of setting up an Apple-specific business scenario like selling iPhones in the US? Consider what the tool provides to guide the team. Reflecting on these questions will help solidify your grasp of business configurations in SAP and their significance in implementing SAP S4HANA Cloud.